Earners, you hear that sound? That's right. The price of EYL University is going up this Friday. This Friday is the last day that you will ever have an opportunity to get it at this current rate. And that includes 70 past webinars, mm. weekly webinars, access to our private investment group on Facebook, which includes our movie and book club, and also bi-weekly real estate sessions with our guy, MG, the mortgage guy. So you know how this works. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't play yourself. Reward yourself. It's time to invest in yourself and your future. Head over there now. Go to EYL University university.com and enter code earners for 40 percent discount off of the annual membership as i said this friday the price of membership will be going up so take advantage now or just pay a little bit more later it's all good <laughs> yeah we'll see you on the other side peace all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back earn your leisure another legendary episode i just got Definitely. a feeling yeah. virtual edition so it's what they've been waiting for right yeah you know we get a lot of requests to facilitate interviews from people from the first it was um caesar yeah. and, and dj envy shout out to them they're like yo can y'all get them all we, we made that happen then the guy in and real then, life um, yeah jay morrison <laughs> everybody kept asking for jay morrison so we got him on shout out to jay then that's cool um, dana chanel prince donnell people kept asking for them we yep. got them on so Where big business Huh? Oh yeah, my oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been on, they've been on. So a family, um, big business. People ask for him a lot, definitely. But the one person that we wasn't able to track down, the gentleman Derek Grace Two, T W O, the and, number. And people, people was asking for him for a lot up until last week. I'm like, yo, I try to make it happen. We'll see what we can do. I got, I have a DM. I'm gonna send it to you. They was like, yo, yo, if you real, just get Derek Grace, bro. I'm like, yo, soon come, bro. Soon come. <laughs> yeah, so so we, we we were able to make it happen. So I'll give a quick background. If you're not familiar with Derek Grace, he has a huge, huge community that he's built online. I think like over 590,000 Instagram um, followers. He's a best-selling author. He's a board game inventor. I just found out recently he's coming out with a video game. Okay, yep. Um, he's homeschooler. Uh, for his children, way before distance learning was around. Mm -hmm. Serial entrepreneur, um, just real big on investing, yeah. real estate. He has interesting philosophies on, um, we'll talk about as far as like the, the traditional financial structure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just a really dynamic guy and young too, 30, 30 years old, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, bro, I'll be 31 August 20th. Yeah. 89, yeah. baby. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, we. I think... Um, my song was at his party in Wallow, right? My song in Wallow? Yeah. Uh, my song, Wallow, Banner was there, Keys was there, and we had booked Nip too, which, you know, Nip passed. I, 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 I saw that story. Rest you booked him on March 15th. Peace. Two weeks later, we lost the great one. Yeah, My song and Wallow are, are also EYL. Yeah, alumni. that's a fact. Shout out to them. Shout out to both of them. So, but without, without further ado, Derek, uh, thank you for joining us, bro. I appreciate it. I, bro, I appreciate y'all having me, bro. I, uh, this is a long time coming. You know, we're supposed to link, like, eight months ago <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here even though it's virtual i'm glad to be here yeah yeah for Big sure fact. for sure so let's get right into it um so you have like i said you you have an interesting philosophy on financial literacy just looking at your videos and stuff like that but i want to dig back a little deeper like how did you um even get into business like how do you go from growing up in tampa and shout out to tampa too because I used to live out there. I, I used say, to live in there Bray for a Bradenton, Florida. Yeah, shout out oh, to... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. how did you get into, you know, the mindset that you are now being an entrepreneur, being a serial entrepreneur? Like, was that something that was taught in your household or, like, how did that come about? I'm going to be honest. Uh, absolutely not. Independence was taught in my household because my pops was... I mean, my mom, too. But, bro, I'm, I'm going to say, like, the, in terms of balance, my pops, he was big on... Um, us being able to have our own. So I would say, bro, he did give us a lot of the independent spirit, but he didn't really use the word independence. And he never really taught entrepreneurship. He taught us like the blue collar way, you feel me? You're going to get your, you know, get get a minimal education. He went big on like, oh, you must go to college. But it was like, you know, get your job, work your way up, get your bread, invest in things, X, Y, Z. And bro, to be honest, I think like one of the best things my pops ever did for me was that he spoiled me. But around 12, bro, he had a sit-down conversation with me and my older brother, and he was like, hey, y'all becoming men. And at this point, y'all need to start figuring out stuff on your own. So, bro, what it did for me is it kind of like, it gave me a sense of entitlement, but he also taught me the importance of doing for self. So I did, like, from 12 and beyond, I did, like, like a lot of y'all, like, damn, the world owed me something. 
but he taught me the, the importance of hard work. So it also instilled in me the world don't owe you nothing that you don't work for. So, bro, that's that's what really like. And I ain't gonna lie, bro, I've always hated authority. I didn't have amazing grades in school. I like, I was a kid that used to just like to be late, just to buck the people that shit has to explain about you know, so Structure never was my thing, bro. I, I was definitely a troublesome child. Like, I think, bro, you know, the only time I got honor roll my whole school career was my 12th grade year, my last report card. And that's because I couldn't pass algebra two, so they put me in remedial math. And then I finally, like, I almost got honor roll, but bro, for the most part, I always been rebellious and and I always wanted to do things my way. So when I did have my taste of corporate America and I saw how they handle things in terms of nepotism, chain of command, and just how a lot of times we are like the small people on the totem pole, I told myself then I was never going to work for nobody else. And in 2012, I tattooed my face and I just never looked back after that, bro. I'm, I've been running as an entrepreneur ever since. Yeah, I, I, I heard the story about the tattoos. I was like, yo, that's pretty interesting. And your stance was like, yo. I never want corporate America. I know they ain't gonna want me if I do this. So you started with one. How how, how do we go from there? All right, bro. So I tell you all the time, like to me, I have what what's called an investor spirit. Like, this is something I made up. <laughs> <laughs> but bro, if I like something, I'm gonna do it a lot. So that's the type of person I am, bro. So I got the first one. It looked like an A. It's on. I can't even what side it's on, but it's an ancient symbol of strength. And that, and that was my mindset. I was like, cool. Corporate the corporate world ain't gonna want me. I ain't gonna want them. And bro, I ain't gonna lie, I deal with procrastination really bad. So that was kind of one of those things that put my back against the wall because I, I feel like I perform better under pressure. So following that, bro, uh, I literally got like eight within like the next two weeks. And I just was like, yeah, it's a wrap, bro. Like, <laughs> you look crazy. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, bro, I ain't gonna lie, but it forced me to perform at a high level because at that point, you gotta make it because nobody's gonna give you, you know, no $15, $20 job looking how I look these days with 42 facial tattoos. You're not going to be part of the welcoming committee. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> probably not. Probably not. Probably not. So, so that was intentional. That was an intentional play on, on your part to really force yourself. Like you like burnt the ships pretty much. Like there's no turning back at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's dope. So procrastination, and I am guilty of this as well, uh, admittedly. What, when has it worked to your detriment? You know, because you said like, yeah, I like my back against the wall. But sometimes we put our back against the wall and... We don't make it off the wall. So when is it not working your benefits? Uh, bro, I learned a hard lesson in that last year. So, uh, all right, bro, like my high, my hierarchy of success has always been my father, right? So my pops live in a really nice neighborhood, real big house. And it's only, it's a private community, only a gated community, only like 20, 25 homes in their total. It was one lot left. And I went and bought that lot for like 60 grand, January 8th, 2018. My project manager, right, he kept telling me, he was like, bro, you need to give other people access to your account. Because, bro, I, I, I've had a lot of issues with banks in the past due to what I teach. And I understand, like, you are here trying to teach a collective of people how to in-home bank, but your money still comes through us from Shopify. So, like, I've had people in banks that have really put me to the side and point, like, do you not like us or do you have an issue? And I'm <laughs> like, nah, it's nothing personal with y'all whatsoever. It's just the structure that y'all work for. I see a lot of disadvantages in terms of when it comes to my people, like y'all thriving, but y'all thriving off the backs of my people. Like I've explained it to him in a, in a, in a nice way, you know, a gang of times. But anyway, bro, he kept telling me, attach somebody else to your account so you don't have to visit banks in person. And I kept blowing them off procrastinating. So, I mean, my board games, bro, they come from China. So last mid, mid 2019, right. I got another, another order, 10,000 and it come from China. And I get ready to just do the wire like I always do. And a young lady that work in the bank, she's like, hey, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but they got a termination set up for your account. You got 14 days and you can't spend no money in there. And then when the 14 day hit, they're going to cut you, cut you a cashier check and send you on your way. I'm like, what happened? So, bro, they pull out a SARS report and all. And she was like, you went to a fifth third in Atlanta. And the lady in Atlanta said, your transaction seems suspicious. You had a lot of jewelry on. You had a lot of tattoos. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. damn, hi. Like, yeah. That's grounds to terminate the account. But she was like, it's, it's you know, it's their, they could do it. It's their system. So anyway, bro, to fast forward, remember I had this lot and I was going to build my dream home. I was building like a, it was an eight five. Cause like I got a lot of children, bro. So I always wanted a huge house. I was going to build an eight five, like 4,000 square feet. And I was going to be next door to my pop. So I already in my mind, when I get the lot, I'm like, yeah, I done made, it. I got my bread on. I'm going to live next to my hero, my pops. Like I'm doing my thing. And bro, when they froze that money, the only money that I could gather up, because they I owed China fifty grand. 
was to go back and sell that lot back to the people I bought it from. So I ended up losing that lot. I got my game because I used the money from the lot. But bro, I ended up losing that lot. And that's when I saw it and I'm like, if I had to just listen to him the first 30 times, he said, attach somebody else to your account so you don't even got to personally deal with those people. Nobody would have ever known anything. And like one visit to go get 10 grand in Atlanta cost me that. I mean, I got my board games, but it cost me that dream home and I would have been neighbors with my pop. So yeah, bro, procrastination definitely do have its time where it <laughs> took me out and I'd be like, damn, why I ain't listening? Why I keep, I'm 30 and I still, I, and I, bro, I can identify my issue and I still fall victim to it sometimes. You know, it's learning. It's learning. First step is awareness. So let's talk about in-home <laughs> bank. We're going to talk about the board game, but before we even talk about the board game, I want to just talk about your philosophy on in-home banking because, um, you know, like I said, I did some research and I, I know, I want you to explain it better than I can, but it's, it's kind of like you. You're doing everything yourself as opposed to getting a job, getting a 401k, getting insurance from the right. job, getting a loan from the bank. So, yeah, can you talk about that as far as like the philosophy behind that? Yeah, yeah, bro. So, but in a nutshell, in home banking is us basically assessing the systems, all the monetary systems, from insurance to loan systems to banking, and figuring out how we can replace those positions with our own people and then still maintain the integrity. Because I do feel like banks and insurance, there is a give and take system, but more times than not, our people are not the benefactor of the business deal. We get a couple crumbs, like I say this all the time. They families have generational wealth, grandchildren, college paid for, and we be up current generation trying to figure out how to get school uniforms come August. So with in home banking, I really wanted to create a structure where like we literally will use their blueprint, but we won't screw screw one another over on the back end a lot of times how they do. So like uh, I mean, bro, I've, I've had investment groups in the past where the investees would get anywhere from five to 30 percent on a, on a, a ROI on a monthly return. Because I really wanted to show people that like that's why I like the cover of the, or the board game says we don't need them. They need us. But a lot of our people dealing with distrust, they're dealing with a strong level of self-hate. So they don't even see the importance of investing in one another and that we literally can create our own powerhouses on the roof. Like, for instance, Derek are coming out with, a, uh, with an action figure this year. And I have to front her 225 grand for China to start manufacturing it. Rather than my daughter have to wait till she she just turned nine on Monday. Rather than her have to wait until 28 to go beg the loan, I mean beg the bank for a loan to get in some upside down debt and then pay them back. I'd rather her daddy front her the money. She pay her daddy back and owe her daddy interest. So at that point, I'm stimulating her economy and she's stim she's reciprocating and stimulating mine. The whole point is we're keeping that money at one table and we're still progressing forward because everybody eating off one another. So, bro, in, like, to be real, in-home in banking is just like banking, but I'm not going, I'm not giving you 1% on $100,000. To me, that's just disrespectful. Feel me? So, I'd I, I rather us, like, an, another simple format. If, if, bro, if you have five grand and me and him need 2500 apiece, you're going to break down the five grand. We're going to kick back the interest. Everybody at this table eating. Because when we paying these outside entities and doing business with them, that money rarely trickles back down to our communities of people that look like us, period. So that was the whole concept, bro. Just studying these structures and then figuring out how we could we could literally emulate the blueprint. But we're going to maintain our integrity within that and not screw one over. So screw one other over on the back end. So when do we get to a point where, we, like, obviously you said it dead on, like, there's, there's trust issues. When do we get to a point where we can have these structured systems and, and people trusting each other and building off of each other? Well, I, I, because look, people always say that to me, right? They be like, man, family be the first ones. And I'm like, you know, sometimes that's true, but that's why we structure these business deals with paperwork. That's why we got to understand the verbiage. We got to understand the, the importance of black and white. I don't want to encourage anybody to have to sue their little brother, but if that's what you have to do, to maintain some legitimacy with your business deals, and that's what you do because that's what these entities do. So the crazy thing to me, bro, is people with that traditionalism, they rather just continuously get screwed over for another 80 years than to break bread with their brother, thinking that he may potentially screw them over. Like, bro, like, for the life of me, bro, I never understand how people fall out with their cousin for $20 that went missing at 25, but she'll do business <laughs> with a bank until you're 85 and you have no issue with them slapping you over the head, gambling your money on Wall Street, and you feel me, and they give you 1% on your bread over the course of six months. Yeah. So as far as like the investment club that you had mentioned, that's, um, I guess, like a bunch of people come together and they would loan somebody money, like kind of like a Susu? Yeah, yeah bro, Susu? bro to, to be real, see, somebody educated me on Susu like two years ago, and it's much like Susu. So like, 
my investment group in 2018, bro, they collectively, they invested 90 grand. I brought back like 908,000 by way of the business that I do with board games, X, Y, Z. And everybody like easily tripled, quadrupled their money within a month or two. I came up, I was able to reinvest and put that into other businesses that made more money. And they came up as well because they was able to eat off what I was bringing to the table through my, you know, my personal endeavors. Yeah, the partner. That's we they call the partner system. Was Indians? Yeah, choice you're making. Yeah, so they call it partner system. Yeah, they have you on that suit. suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have exactly. you on that. I, it's crazy until somebody's like, "Yo, I ain't got it this month." <laughs> 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 no, nah, I mean, but that I mean, yeah, I mean, as far as the philosophy of it is, is definitely something that other communities use. Yeah. Um, especially like you know, like you go to Chinatown and a lot of communities, they don't, they might come to the country, they don't necessarily feel comfortable dealing with banks for a variety of different mm -hmm. reasons so they they do it themselves like you know what i'm saying so it's not it's not a it's not a foreign concept but i think for us like you said i think the biggest issue for us a lot of times is mistrust yeah because it's like all right if i loan this person a thousand dollars so like if i don't get it back <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a whole different situation yeah, I got, <laughs> now, I got, now i gotta come see you that's the thing like <laughs> not having the the ha having the economics right like how do we can start with five thousand but i ain't even got five thousand yeah. you know what i'm saying exactly. So I, yeah, how did I was so all right. So what would you say like like for that situation? If if it's a bunch of people and everybody's broke, like how does how does that get the ball rolling? Is everybody chipping a little bit to kind of Yeah, bro, I, I I would say this too, right? So for me, in home banking isn't only just like monetary. In home banking is I would bro, I'm, I'm in the Airbnb, I wish I had one of the board games with me now, but in home banking can be like exposure. So like bro, one of the things I did with the board game is my uh, my cameraman, his logo is on my board game. My graphic designer, his logo is on my board game. My children logo, and my bit, and one of them, like my one of my most prominent business partners, Khadija Grant, her logo is on the board game. So did we break bread in that instant? No, but I dress it up as a package deal. So if you're rocking with me, you gotta you forced to rock with the people who help my business to function. Just like if you crack open the board game, it's certain people that I that I'm cool with or that I do business with. Where like some of the actual cards within the board game have their social media, their website, and their likeness. So, bro, like to me, and in home banking ain't always about the dollar. In home banking can be about the resources or us figuring out ways that we could barter. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like if I'm spending a grand, so, so say I'm the only one in the circle with some bread, and I'm spending a grand a month on yard service, then one of the bros can come in and substitute that, and then we could find we could find another way to redirect that grant, or I could redirect it to him rather than the outside entity. Like, and I was just talking about this earlier, bro, like. I really feel like in-home banking, and they don't even got to give it that name. Like, I don't even want to credit or none of that. But I think that concept, period, is taking a, a, a stronger lead right now with post-pandemic. Because, it, bro, this this beautiful to see. I see so many of us collectively getting together and, like, no, we're going to be real intentional about rocking with each other and supporting one another. So it don't even got to be the money, bro. It, it could, you, you could have somebody that just do the emails on the team. You you could have somebody that, that set up the, 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 the Zoom calls, the social media, whatever it is. But basically, bro, it's just finding out what valuables and what intangible and tangible gifts do you bring to the table, us all exchanging them, bartering or breaking bread. But we keeping that bread at one table. And if we didn't give you permission to sit at this table, you're not eating with us. You're not eating with us whatsoever. <laughs> I, I heard the marketing genius. I wrote that down. I was like, marketing genius, right? So, like, that's in, that's incredible, right? You're putting it inside the game very intentionally. And, of course, somebody's going to see that and eventually going to use that as a business. Right. You said something about manufacturing, even when you're talking about your daughter's toy going to China. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about having manufacturing done here? Uh, bro, I would love to, but I just don't think they can keep up with my volume. Mm -hmm. I've tried on multiple occasions, but... I tried a company out in Las Vegas, and I tried two different companies right here in my city. Uh, the, the 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 volume at which my stuff moves is hard for them to keep up keep up a lot of times. And then I find myself in a ten thousand people want a refund type of position, which I have in the past. <laughs> and not a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good feeling. Now we had um we 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 had somebody else that was on the podcast that talked about um she had a board game yeah, Chantel Calloway. Yeah, shout out to Chantel, and she was saying that her board game. Is, it's not a board game. What is it? It's like a card game. It's in that category, yeah. board game. So, ain't, long story short, she was like, she couldn't she couldn't afford to make it in America because the price is so much more compared to China. It's almost like it's a no-brainer. Like, if she made it in America, the price that she would have to charge people would be way more than people would be willing to pay for it. So, she's like, she has no real option but to make it in China. Yeah. Exactly, bro. Like, my board game, 
uh, the company out in Vegas initially quoted me at like $5. And then the day that we got ready to send the wire, that price went up to $56. So, yeah, bro, like. You said $56? America can get dangerous, yeah. But just on that real quick, bro, uh, my project manager actually went and visited that company after they switched that price on me. And what he told me is that they did their research. They saw how much I was selling it for. And then they they decided it was a good idea to try to price gouge at the last minute. But just uh, manufacturing, and I mean, I'm sure y'all know that, bro, but manufacturing in America, period, can get a little shaky because y'all know, like, we don't have the resources in abundance like China does. I'm, bro, I don't know where China be finding this stuff and how they keep <laughs> producing. Like, it's like, yeah, you, you need 100,000 games? No problem. They just snatch it down from somewhere, whip it up, and, and get it across the water. So what was your first, let me go back a little bit. So what was your first endeavor as an entrepreneur? Like, all right, when you quit corporate America, you got your, your face tatted up. You said, I'm, I'm doing full-time entrepreneur thing. What was the mm -hmm. first, like, what was the first thing that you did? Uh, bro, the first thing I did was I, um, I started a retail business. I was selling screen print t-shirts and, and uh, screen print t-shirts. I had a young lady I was messing with. Her aunt was plugged in at Foot Action joy and brand and nike so what i was doing back then is uh the line was called millionaire bound i would make t-shirts that coincided with the colorway of whatever jordan was coming mm. and then basically just bulk up the price so feel me i'm 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 gonna i'm gonna sell you a pair of patent leather 11s for 350 that's gonna offset the price of the shirt and then i'm still gonna hit you for an extra buck 25 on the shoe then she gonna hit it with that 30 percent employee discount so, you know, we we coming up like two hundred and twenty dollars. I, 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 I know a few things about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, that that was my initial business, and I took the bread from that. I did that from 2012, 2016. I took the bread from that. I invested fully in literature, and I left that business alone and full time. Started writing curriculums, books, things of that nature. So, it, God amongst men is that the first book or is that the second book? No, no, that's my second book. My first book is called it's a it's a seven hundred page autobiography. It's called Thank God We Don't Look Like What We've Been Through. Mm. Uh, uh, bro, that book bombed. I spent like my last five hundred getting copies, and I sold like twenty seven <laughs> copies in two years. <laughs> and then my second book went number one, bro. And then nothing was the same after that. Yeah, I, I know that uh, Nip is a, a huge influence in your life, and obviously yeah. yours as well. Um, he's the only person we follow, and um, we, we we were sure that our lines were going to cross based on the work that we were doing. But the book right. Contagious, uh, you read that, and it, it kind of said how you were going to price your book, right? Yeah, for sure, Russ. So Nip did an interview. It had to be like five, six years ago. Yeah, it had, yeah, right around five, six years ago. And no, I think five years because I, I I wrote the next book. Yeah, yeah. But he but he talked about that cheese day, bro. And I'm not gonna lie, I never finished the whole book. I, if I'm not mistaken, I read it like page 79, and I was like, I got it. And bro, one thing Nip taught me, he was doing a video one day with somebody, and he was like, I do boutique pricing, and they was like, What is that? And he was like, Basically, I develop my price points. We not looking at the market, or gauging our gauging our value based on what the market says. We gonna put our stuff out there for what we feel like is worth. And that spoke to me, bro. And ever since then, I was like, uh-huh. So whatever I wake up feeling like tomorrow, this is what y'all about to be. <laughs> and I just went right now. It got you the number one. You nah, saw, that's right? a fact. That's, and people might not know with the contagion. So that's with a $100 Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. That's when Nip had the $100 mixtape. And he said that he got that. So it's interesting because it's like a ripple effect. Knowledge is a ripple effect. So Nip got inspired from that book. Mm -hmm. um, with the book got inspired from the cheesesteak. Which inspired right. the book, which inspired Nip, which inspired you, and right, now right. you might inspire somebody else. Like you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like a domino effect. You never know who you're gonna touch. Yeah, you sold less units, but you made more money. Absolutely, bro. And then like, so like initially, my first book was released on Amazon, but then I like just following Nip Blueprint, I snatched all my stuff off Amazon. I stopped printing ISBN numbers on my book. So you 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 like if you ain't getting a book from DerekGrace2.com, you ain't getting it. So basically, bro, like I, I cut out the, the opportunity for anybody to even get it from anywhere. And then we went like, so basically, bro, I, I took that number one selling piece of paper I got from Amazon and then I just leveraged it in the independent world and it added way more value. Because it's like, oh, here, number one selling author and he independent. And then, you know, next thing we know that I know that book in itself real easily at like 50, 60,000 units sold independently by itself, not including none of the other books around it. Yeah, that's interesting because you know, everybody's got their own philosophy. Like we interviewed Ash Cash, shout out to him, and he's an author, and he was yeah, saying, that's my bro. That's uh, my bro. Yeah, 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 that's good our guy, guy, good guy. So he was like, he does the Amazon route where, because his thing is like he didn't want to have too many books and then they don't sell. 
But the thing with Amazon, they take like 30%? 40%. 40%? 40%. Sorry, bro. That's why I love. Hey, bro, they was, <laughs> Amazon, like, look, when they was taking their money after I shipped the book, we was like, they was making like 87 more cent than me. And I'm like, oh, no, this, <laughs> no, this is backwards. Nah, and I got up out of there, bro. Like, as soon as I hit number one, I was going, I was like, you know what? If I could build my following, like, a tenth, a fifth of what Amazon working with, I'm going to be a millionaire easily because I know how to sell my own stuff. And I took that route, and I just, I've been going ever since. Now, one thing I still do with Amazon, bro, is my digitals. So, like, it do feel good to come home when you've been on the road and you got a couple uh, royalty checks in there. But in terms of physical and everything, I don't let them sell it at all. And like I tell people this all the time, there's not one human who can quote me and say, I saw you say buy your digital off Amazon because I don't even promote it. But the fact that the name's so relevant, people just stumble across it monthly and go buy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I get my independent money and then I get my royalty check from them and it worked out. So in the next segment, we're going to talk about some some other uh, things that I saw that's interesting as far as on the technical side uh, with different okay. financial literacy. But before we go, I wanted to ask you about marketing. So I noticed your name, Derek Grace 2. Is, mm -hmm. is that your real name or is that just like a play like instead of the second uh -huh. or I'm, junior? I'm, I'm Derek Grace the second, but I put it, I put the TWO. Okay. So yeah, so like your marketing is interesting because I, I, I peep everything. So you, watch, you wear a lot of jewelry, obviously, you know, a lot of tattoos. The, the the heavy artillery um so so yeah so is that is that is that all part of your marketing is that just who you are as a person or is it like just kind of like want to separate yourself from being a regular you know person right, bro, so that bro that's a great question bro it's a mixture of both because that is me every day now i, I will say this bro just just because i'm on earning legion i got the nip piece on and I got one Thank of my you. one of my circle pieces. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't wear pieces no more. I wear like six Cubans, and I just leave it at that. But no more pieces. All my pieces put up in the safe. Yeah. Uh, the guns, bro, that's natural to me. I've always loved guns. I'm, I've been a collector since I was like, I mean, before even the legal age, before I was supposed to have one, I was collecting guns. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, nah, bro, but now as far as showing it intentionally, 1,000%, it's marketing. So, like, Bro, it's, you know, it's small, minute things that count. Like when you do your still image on your video, sometimes it helps to show a double barrel AR, AR-15 because that's not something you can find everywhere. And it's going to grab people's attention <laughs> and they're going to stop and watch the video 80,000 times. They're going to know not to come close. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, some people never seen like total brother there got 11 Cubans. They never seen like 11 Cubans, 20, 29 pounds of jury stacked up. So yes, look, Rick yeah, would be bro, proud, bro. It, it definitely, it's definitely <laughs> a mixture of my real life and marketing. But right now, bro, I'm not going to lie. These two pieces, this is definitely, you know, just, just celebrating being on EYL in a little, in a little <laughs> mixture of marketing because my neck killing me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ghostface and Slick Rick and Buster. They'll be proud of you right now, bro. Uh, yeah. Killer Mike. Yeah, Killer, Killer Mike, Mike too. Heavy influence. Yeah, and, and real quick, bro, just on that, yeah, shout out to Slick Rick. Shout out to Ghostface, Killer Mike, Nip. Like, these, these are my jewelry connoisseurs. Even though they ain't know it, I was watching them from a young to a man, like, yeah, when I grow up and get some money, I'm gonna have me 20 chains on. <laughs> what Nip say, two kilos on my neck, like the 80s. Like the 80s. Like the yeah, 80s. Yeah, bro. And I and I, I I was intentional with this. So this one right here is two is two kilos. This one right here is like roughly six pounds. His head is a kilo, yeah. and then the, the Cuban is connected yeah. to the kilo, bro. You got the dominaries in his ear too, right? Yeah, yeah. It, so Nip wore like these flower. Uh, they call them like flower earrings. So he these are the type of earrings that he like really wore. Feel me in real time. So. My jeweler tried to try to mimic him to the T with it. But you but you also are always an investor at heart, because I saw a video when you were saying even gold is an investment and you kinda broke oh, yeah, that down yeah. a little bit. You wanna talk about that a little bit? Like it's not just for show, it's actually you know oh, investment yeah, yeah. too. Oh yeah, bro. So what I, I call it ratchet investing, meaning like <laughs> we 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 buy it for the love or the of the shine, but subconsciously we also remember we gonna we gonna purchase it a certain way to make sure that it retains its value or it grows its value. So Y'all will never see me with too many iced out pieces. I did that one time with Johnny Dang. I got an iced out unlearn and relearn piece to represent the brand. But other than that, bro, I try to stick to nothing but solid gold. But, uh, and bro, speaking on that, Nip, Nip, the one who taught me that, Nip had a line. Bro, this had to be almost 10 years ago. He was like, watch the value of the dollar drop and gold explode. And I remember when he said that, bro, it hit me, but I didn't get it. But I was like, what did gold explode? And then I saw him further going into detail in the interview about it. And he was just like, yeah, he, he expressed 
why he do so many kilos. Even to the all money in pieces, it's typically a block of gold. You feel me? He sprinkled a couple of diamonds on it and the dollar sign, but other than that, it was solid gold. So, bro, like he he's totally been the inspiration as to why I even buy my jewelry the way I do because when bro planted that seed, I started researching. I was like, oh, okay. It ain't really, it's, it look cool, but it's not really the business to flood your pieces with all them diamonds because you're eating up your gold weight for that diamond weight and them, your diamonds ain't really worth nothing. I know, bro, most dudes I know with them pieces don't even know how to use a loop. You feel me? They, they just buy the diamonds for the look. And then a year later, you be like, yeah, bro, your chain worth like a fourth of what it was worth. Mm. Yeah, we talked about, we, we did an episode with a, um, a jeweler um, and he was, he was saying that as far as like with the um, watches, how like um, a bust down is really... You destroying it and it's like a plain chain which no diamond like either you buy a rolex you gotta buy it with no diamonds because like once you start to drill and put diamonds inside of it you really exactly. you we can really do. dequality the whole situation and it, it lowers the value and he was like you know like just a pure gold rolex is an investment it goes up over time but if you start to put diamonds in it on street has street value is like <laughs> people like it but in the real world because that's another thing too diamonds don't really have the same value. Diamonds value is placed off of just people that just like diamonds. But gold has real value. Yeah. Like gold yeah, straight up. Bro, it's, it's, it's a commodity just like the dollar. Like people don't begin like, y'all know the dollar only popping because we kind of say it's popping. But as someday they may just wake up and be like, hey, I don't want that piece of paper no more. I'm going to use yeah. something else to buy stuff with. Yeah, somebody told us that. It was like, yo, how, how can you put value to something if you can always make more of it, right? Like if I could always print more, does it really have value? So we, we got to no, think of it like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, we're going to jump into the next segment and um, we're going to get into some 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 nitty gritty. All right. So one thing I wanted to ask you that I, um, I saw you speak about and it, I, um, it's actually really interesting uh, for anybody that knows me. They know like I have a background in, in insurance. So when you said something about like having younger people in the family buy insurance on like the oldest person in the family or elder in the family. And um, that's interesting philosophy that I see other coaches have used in its it's strategic planning when it comes to life insurance. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, bro. So it's crazy, right? Um, I was in Dallas like two, three years ago, kicking it with this dude at one of my events and he put me on game and he was like, bro, the culture got to start gathering up the grandchildren and they opening up million dollar policies on grandma. And he was like, granted, grandma kind of old, so it may be expensive, but if we split it eight ways, then, you know, what's the big deal? Like, that's joy and money. That's People spend out on marijuana. Like, people spend out on anything. You feel me? So if, if, if grandma policy $2,000 and we got to break bread at, you know, what's, what's it? if it's 10 of us and we got to spend $200 a month, bro, we should, to my personal opinion, we shouldn't bat an eye at that type of expense because when grandma leave here, and again, we're not banking on grandma dying. We're not hoping she leave tomorrow. But life is life, and we know she's going to transition at some point. To me, bro, that's that's one of the ways we can instantly acquire generational wealth. Like, it ain't a lot of people at 25 that could be like, yeah, man, I just got hit with a, court, with a quarter million. I've got to find something to do with it. Like, most of us have to grind a long time where we never even get to the point where we see that type of bread. So, bro, I definitely feel like more of our culture got to start investing in that manner. And, bro, that's why I be so big on people getting their family affairs in order family affairs in order like who is the ceo of the family who the spokesperson who's the aggressor who's passive who's the negotiator so i think like that's a part of people structuring their systems and like one of the things my bro key 19 keys always tell me is like the 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 universe is ran by families so if you're not in the business of structuring yours so y'all could get in the race or get in the fight and try to gain some ground you know the struggle gonna be a lot harder as 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 a one-man wrecking crew trying to you trying to go to war with the Waltons and your business out there, man. Walmart got things sold up, bro. You're going to need a squad behind yeah, they number six, seven, eight, and nine on the wealthiest people yeah, in the world. That's a fact. <laughs> that's, no, that, that, that's, you're, right, you're right on that. You're um, absolutely right on that. And like I said, I've seen it firsthand, actually being in the industry. Other people have done that. I actually have clients that have done that on their, like, I think, like, um, like it was like five children brought insurance policy and the mother was like, um, 65 or something like that, 70. And that's what they're doing. And like you said, it's not, it's not like you don't, you, you don't, you hopefully everybody's going to die. Right. That's another thing I think with black people specifically, we got to get out of this spookiness where it's like, you know, don't talk about death. Like, no, you got to talk about it. You got to plan for it because it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't, if you don't prepare you're still going to die. It's not like you're not going to die if you don't prepare for it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro, 
And the crazy thing is, some of them really be functioning like that. Like, man, I'm, a, I'm just going to avoid the conversation and hopefully nothing will happen. Like, no, nah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. still going to transition. So, yeah, but when that, when they do that, then it now it's like the GoFundMe route. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, right. yo, was right. it really worth that? Yeah, strategic. And, and, then, and then, bro, just with that real quick, I tell people all the time, like, think about how dangerous we are when we're not prepared and we figure out how to bury one of the homies for seven grand with a fish fry. Bro, if people develop that hustle and that mentality on a consistent basis, now we're talking about the neighborhood being able to net 15 grand a month. Because they, they'll fit, bro, when the home, one of the homies die, they'll, fit, they'll find a way to get seven grand in 10 days. <laughs> but if, bro, but if, if, if they really redirected that hustle and was like, we're going to make this the blueprint, then, then now we're talking about the hood being like a quarter million dollar hood on an annual basis. But, bro, that's one of the biggest things I learned with people being. They just reactive, and it's like they don't really understand life until life be like, "Hey, I'm here to I'm here to collect you." Then it's like, "Oh wait, I don't want to no, let me get, <laughs> no, it's time to go. Let's go." Yeah, and it, it goes into into like some of the things you've been teaching in that uh, unlearn and relearn movement. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we've been taught things that just aren't correct, man. So, right. what can you get into that? What was your motivation behind that? Yeah, for sure, bro. So. Bro, um, I started homeschooling. How old? My son's going to be 12 in August. He was seven, bro. So I started homeschooling five years ago. And that's when we came up with the concept of learning and relearn. And basically, bro, in a nutshell, it's just us whitewashing out the, the bulk of the things we've been taught. Because the bulk of those things are based off traditionalism. And if we really gonna, if we really going to check the source of that information, most of them are not living their best lives. That's why I tell you time, like, check the source. For me, bro, like... I don't speak on nothing I'm not educated on. I only like to teach on my level of expertise. That's why, like, I haven't started teaching. I done lost 10 pounds in the last two months, but I ain't teaching nobody about health and wellness because I don't know. My lady be helping me lose weight. I don't know what I be doing. She just be throwing drinks down my throat and telling me ride my bicycle. But, bro, for me, that's what unlearn and relearn words like, man. Let's double back and start questioning, you know, the bulk of the things that we've been taught because if we're looking at our ancestors down to our great-grandmas, these systems and these instructions not working. We, we we fourth generation poverty soldiers, so something ain't working. We gotta we gotta redo it. No, nah, that's a fact. Um, another thing you talk about a few times I saw, trust. Um, like not trusting each other, but like trust, like the legal trust document. Right. Well, so like you talk about that, like why is why is that important to set up a, a trust? I I know, bro. For me, I know I don't want my family fighting in probate court, and the last thing I want because I'm sure when I transition. My children and the people close to me, because I take care of a lot of people. I've hired a lot of family. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them are going to take that really hard. And the last thing I want them to do is be beating each other up or pulling guns about what belongs to who and this and that, bro. So down to my guns, to my jewelry, to my art, bro. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm in the midst of structure and everything. So each of my children know exactly what they get, what paintings belong to them, what guns belong to them, what jewelry, everything. But yeah, bro, that, that's the biggest thing for me is uh, I've, I've, I've seen people fight over a will with 10 grand in it. I can't imagine how they're going to fight over 20 businesses and who knows how many millions of billions of dollars. So rather than the headache, I just want to directly, you know, ha have my overseer handle that, divvy everything out and call it a day. Yeah. I always like to explain trust to people. It's like the will is kind of like, okay, I want to leave my Jordans to my son. The trust right. is kind of like an instructional booklet where it's like, I want to leave my Jordans to my son, but he first has to complete high school and right. then he gets like one shoe. And then if he's married, he'll get to say, so, you know what I'm saying? Like you can actually have like yeah. step by step. So it's, it's a little bit more. And then for uh, tax purposes, a lot of different things you can set trust up for. Um, but estate planning is once again, it's not something that we, we think about a lot because I mean, about. realistically in our neighborhoods, we, we used to just stay to day. Day yeah, to day, right. like you know, what I'm saying you're not thinking about a trust and and all of these things. This this is generation. So when we say generational wealth, a lot of times it's just it's said, but people don't fully understand what that means. It's like they said, like the average American company plans for 20 years, the average Chinese company plans for 300 years in the future. Mm. So they have yeah, a hundred. Yeah, they got a 300 <laughs> year plan. Like you know, what I'm saying. Hey, hey, so, yeah, so, we, we try and get by next week. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's. It's like it like it shows you, you know, that that level of thinking, we have to think bigger than yeah. just ourselves and right, today. Think, like we yeah. got to think for not only tomorrow, but and it's, generations. It's, it's tough. You know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of our communities, they are in survival mode. 
So it's like we got to learn how to first figure out how to survive, then get through that process. And then and hopefully at the end of all this, like, you know, like this economic empowerment movement that we, you know, we are part of and you are, too. It's like now we can get to a point where it's like, yo, it's time to thrive. Like we've got the information. I know that's something that that you stress, too, is like, yo, invest in information, invest in information, invest in education. Bro, you know what I'm saying? That, bro, that has taken me so far, bro, just invest in information. And aligning myself with people who know things that I don't. Like, bro, y'all know a lot of stuff that I don't. I'll be putting y'all stuff in my story. <laughs> people don't under, bro, like, I ain't got no certifications, no degrees, but it's really the people I stand next to and the books that I buy that make me super dangerous. And the fact that, like, I, I like experience, so I'm going to jump out the window before I play it safe. That's just my, that's that's just the nature of how I function. But, man, bro, you, you're a thousand percent right about that. Yeah, I, I took your quote, man. You said, stop waiting to invest in information until it's the only thing left that can save you. And, bro, I seen it in abundance. Like, I ain't mad at it, right? No lie. Best money in business I ever had was this past March. I made $708,000 strictly retailing 30 days off just one of my websites. And, bro, I, I appreciated the overwhelming support, but it still was kind of a head scratcher. Like, why did, why did it have to take for the pandemic to hit for y'all to recognize that? The, the game don't really care for us, and and we're like we're disposable. And it's just so many questions I begin from people. And I'm like, bro, they you know we usually typically start history in sixth grade. Like you just realized the country didn't really care about us like that, or yeah. well, you bit. But I be like, you know what, bro? As long as you get in now, it's cool. Let's let's Listen, let's buckle up. Let's ride. I'm happy that you did, man. I had plenty of conversations over the past couple of weeks, and it's just frustrating. I'm like, yo, we just getting here. Like, yo, these people have been in place for 45, 50 years. And they just seen these things as a problem? You know what I'm right, saying? It's crazy. It was like Frederick Douglass in his autobiography, Great Read. He was saying that, um, you know, like the, the system of slavery, it, it, it ran its course pretty much. And it was like, right. it's, it became a point where it's actually counterproductive to try to make somebody, force somebody to work. But he said, like, you transition it to having, I'm paraphrasing, you have, you have people just working just to get by. They're not even techni technically, they're still slaves because it's like you, you go to work and you're working, you're, you're not being forced to work. So you're working, but you don't really have any money. All your money is going to pay bills. So it's coming back to them anyway. So now it's like you're on the hamster wheel and that's a way more productive system than they try to force somebody to work. Yeah. So that was his whole thing. And, it, and it's interesting because that was over 150 years ago, yeah. probably. And it's still true to this day. Unfortunately, they say the average black home has like $2,000 or something like that of net worth. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're still yeah, two grand. Yeah. Uh, maybe even I under think that, it's less. Right? less I think it's that, less. Yeah. So um, when we talk about entrepreneurship, group economics and all that stuff, it's like extremely necessary because if not, it's like, what kind of life are you really living? Yeah, it's treadmill. It, it, like I told you earlier, like yo, when we, we listen to lyrics, we heard things. Like when I heard Jay say, "Life's like a treadmill, people running in place, getting nowhere fast, a whole year done pass." Like that's the life that you just explained. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. And bro, it's funny you said that, right? I did an interview, I think two days ago, and Jay hit that line. He's like, "If everybody in your clique is rich, your clique is rugged." No yeah, we live by that. Don't be each other's crutches. Like so I took that line and I was like. Man, when I get some money, I'm putting all my dogs. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into that though. Let's let's talk about that because I know 2018, you retired your mom, you yeah. hired your brothers. Well, yeah, what's yeah. The, how's that process been going? Uh, 2018, bro, I retired moms and I brought her in as like a full time nanny. I got five children, so she'd be super busy. Um, and then like two months after that, I brought. Well, I got three brothers, one in prison. I got two free. I hired both of them. Moving forward. Um, me and Pops became business partners. So my Pops is retired secret service. We started Grace Private Security. I took another page out of the book, Vertical Integration. So with Grace Private Security, because Pops retired from secret service, he basically was grandfathered in for a lot of those things in terms of security. So he basically got to expedite the process. So even with the vertical integration, we then took other relatives and pushed them through and Pops was able to certify them and then teach them how to go teach the classes. So now, like, we're the source of information, we're the source of certifications, and then if you need us to get our hands dirty, Pops can go out and do dignitary security, uh, executive security, whatever the case is, bro. So, bro, my thing I've always been family business. Like, my motto's been family business and none at all. The family not involved, and I'm not at all. So, like, 
A lot of people still ain't caught this, bro, but I've been extremely intentional about all my products. They all have my children on it on purpose because my goal back then was like, damn, if I die or anything happen to me, at least based off the rele relevance alone, they could still eat and make money for the simple fact that this man done attached us to even we know what he was attaching us to. We was full blown babies. He just had our faces plastered on everything from books, curriculums, board games, absolutely everything, bro. So that's been my motto since day one is family business. Now, in terms of like more night 2019, 2020, I started venturing out. That's when I hired the um, well, more so like sub subcontractors. So the development team out in Spain. When we came to them with a the video game concept, they was like, look, we could do it, but if you want it done in a year, we got to quit our jobs. And I was like, I'm not going to pay y'all that. Like, that was my first thought. Like, y'all scheming. And I remember my project manager, he was like, bro, they could do it. It's going to be like $150 an hour. I'm like, no, oh, that's nothing. I'm like, how many hours? He was like, uh, like 7,890. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I started doing the math. I'm like, bro, y'all want it. They want a million dollars. He was like, exactly. He was like, you want the game in a year? So. These eight dudes out in Spain, bro, they end up quitting their jobs. And I basically, I pay them 65K to fourth of every month to keep developing the game. And I'm grateful for that too, bro, because they could have told me, like, give me half right now. I pay it in full, but I make installments to them. And then outside of that, bro, um, I got, like, you know, the same situation with my cameraman down to my assistant. I basically took, not took them away, but people I hire on, bro, outside of just hiring them and compensating them for their services, I try to bring them up, bring them in where their strong suits at. And not only do they get paid like from me as you know in basic payroll, but we move together collectively. So I'm gonna put my cameraman out there so he can go get 30 more jobs a month. Or I'm gonna put my assistant on other people. But yeah, bro, family business, circulating that dollar at one table and just making sure that it, mostly immediate family, bro. I would say that I ain't gonna lie, say I done hired I done hired everybody with the last name Grace. Absolutely not. <sighs> I ain't gonna lie, I don't even like I'm a relative. You know? <laughs> anyway, for the most part, man, just hiring a family, putting the family in position. And I just want everybody to be comfortable, bro. And I feel like we most comfortable when we still could spend that time or we could get money as a team. What what, what does group economics mean to you? Uh, to me, bro, it, it, it means a little more than us getting money as a collective. It mean it mean creative control. It mean power. It mean it mean us. Bro, it, to me, it, it just means having a household full of power players. And that's always been my goal. Like, I never wanted to be the LeBron. I wanted everybody to be the MJ, everybody be the LeBron. Like, I want the whole squad to be dangerous. Like, bro, I, I be liking when me and my daughter be out, and I be like, man, I forgot my wallet. And she be like, you want me to pay for it? Like, we had that type of relationship. And I just be like, yeah, that's what I always wanted. Like, I forgot my bag, but you got your. Like, she got us kicked out of Disney like two years ago. When I kicked out, but they weren't going to let us in. We went through the metal detectors and her little purse go off. And I'm like, babe, what you got in your purse? <laughs> She's like, just my money. Like, bro, I had posted it on the gram and all. Because I, they, like, I'm, I'm thinking they just tripping on us. The dude opened it up, bro. She got a mason jar with like $400. And then I'm like, why you got it in a jar? And she's like, that's where I keep my stash. <laughs> Take it out the purse. She's like, nah, I keep it in the mason jar. But nah, bro, that's, that's, that's what it mean to me, bro. Just, just having a shoulder to lean on. Or not being forced to do business with people that we don't have a genuine love and interest for. Like, I love the fact that I can call one of the bros and be like, I got a 50 piece, you got a 50, let's go in, rather than be like, well, I'm gonna just do business with anybody right now for the sake of trying to get ahead. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you've you actually uh, cured the talent of matching people with tasks they actually enjoy. And um, that's something that we're working on right now. You know, like we try to put people in place and it's like, yeah, not yeah. really a good fit. What's your strategy to, to doing that, man? I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I just learned that strategy this year, so don't let me front <laughs> like I do. <laughs> hey, but bro, anybody that's gonna watch this, dead serious. It is in your best interest to plug people in, doing things they genuinely enjoy. Because I don't care how much money you're paying them. At a certain point, they're not even gonna care about the money if they don't love what they're doing. It's going to be lackluster. There'll be no ambition. And you're going to start to get complaints. And you're going to be like, damn, I thought I'd pay y'all good. What's up? And then one day they just break down and be like, I had this warehouse is 80,000 degrees. I hate being here. Then that's when you're like, oh. So, no, bro, I ain't going to lie. I, I just learned that lesson this year. I had, like, three different people in position. Cause, bro, I was just trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was the right thing. Like, I'm going to put my, put, my, put my peoples on. And then, bro, they do the job cool for six months. And then you find out one day they cuss you out when nobody was around. You're like, Damn, I thought it was love. And they're like, no, bro, I like customer service. I don't like packaging. And they be like, oh, my bad. And two, and I'm going to say this too, bro, communication is really important. Because I know for me, sometimes I get so caught up 
in the money part and just running things and paying things and the, the boss side of it that you never just go to your peoples while they grinding and be like, how your day going? How you feeling? Do you like what you're doing? And bro, I didn't do that. And somebody, somebody on my team checked me on that. And I was just like, damn, you write small stuff. Somebody was like, you know, you never told me thank you for anything. And I'm like, I pay you though. <laughs> and, they, and, and they were like, nah, I feel that, but just say thank you sometimes. And I'm like, you know, you're right. I can't be insensitive sometimes because it's just grind, grind, grind for me. So no lie, bro. I literally just learned that within the last 90 days, somebody cussed me out and I was like, huh? But then when they broke it down, I was like, you're right. I can't be insensitive. It just be work, work, work for me sometimes. No, nah, that's true. And I think that's for any entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur that's mm -hmm. listening to this. That's something to, to keep in mind as far as being a leader is more than just leading. It's about, like you said, putting people in positions that they can thrive in. And it's like if somebody hates to cook, you could pay them to be a chef and they might do it. But it's not it's not their strong <laughs> suit. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, we yeah. learned that. And it's like, like you said, sometimes you learn that on the fly that they might tell you, or sometimes you have to be able to read body language and just kind of tell, like, right. it's not working. Like, oh, you'll see the work. <laughs> like, you'll yeah, actually well, see the work. Yeah. It's like, this ain't, this isn't a good fit. I, I didn't get either. I saw the work. Like, we had just looked into the emails one day, and somebody on my team didn't respond to nothing for like 19 days. And I'm like, wait, they've been getting paid. What they be doing? And then that's when it was like, you never said thank you. And I was just like, Man, you couldn't just tell me that, bro. Just like <laughs> you let 19 go pay. by? Like, yeah, like, bro, I, I lost a couple thousand dollars. And I was like, what's going on? Like, we, who doing this? And then, you know, the team sat down, and that person was just like, yeah, you never said thank you. And I was like, oh, okay, well, look, I ain't going to do business with you no more, but I do apologize. Maybe the next life, I'm going to say thank you when I rehire you and we build again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Got to love it. Got to love it. So, all right. So, in the last second, we're going to go into the, the board game itself. And then also, I want to talk about your education um, yeah. that you're doing as far as your homeschooling and then also the educational hub that I yeah. believe you're working on. So, we're going to get into that in the last segment. All right. So, now we're going to talk about what, um, you know, has really, really blown you up on social media. And that's how I actually learned about you was through the board game. So, can we talk about that? The in-home banking board game. Um, first, yeah, yeah. what made you do the board game? And... What's the format of the board game? I got you, real. So, um, I just want to make sure I, 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 I share it in the most positive way. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, look, I created the concept in home banking in 2017, and I was just doing courses. Well, it started out as like a one day class, and then it turned into a course because I saw people took to it. Our last course, bro, I believe we had 2008 people. And in the final day of class, only 52 people turned in all their homework assignments. So it kind of disappointed me. I'm like, damn, well, what did we just sit here for six weeks and do if y'all really weren't even doing the work outside of me when I'm building with y'all? So I'm sitting there, bro, and I remember, like, I, I, I was taking my medicine that day, you know, just <laughs> meditating in my world. And I said, bro, it just, the light bulb just came. I was like, I'm going to turn it into a board game. And, bro, one of the biggest things I've understood about our people is we love entertainment. And I was like, if we could find a way to basically infiltrate their house and trick them into thinking it's just a fun, family, colorful game, then we're going to force them to learn. So, bro, I hit my project manager. I'm like, bro, I want to make it a board game, yada, yada, yada. And he was like, cool, X, Y, Z. Well, no, no, initially, bro, I didn't have a project manager. But I ended up getting a project manager when I was telling y'all, like, the people out in Las Vegas was trying to price, price gouge. So, bro, my project manager, at, at that point, I didn't know him from absolutely literally nowhere a third party plugged me with him he like hey i know a dude in china who connected he could help you because at this point bro i'm desperate i done collected like almost 900 grand in pre-order money and i got supposed to deliver a game in like 60 days and don't have the game <laughs> so yeah bro so when the whole price gouging thing happened i had a dude i was i was cool with out in vegas i hit him like bro what's up with your people they price gouging yada 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 he like bro i don't know what's going on but i got this little dude i know who got some some ties overseas He'll, um, he'll, 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 he'll hook you up. So he just gave me the dude number, bro. Like, no lie. I don't know him from nowhere. His English terrible. Like, bro, it, it was like the most awkward phone call ever, but I ain't gonna lie, bro. I had no choice. I get on the phone with the dude. He like, hey, this my name, yada, yada, yada. He's like, I can make this happen for you, but you're gonna have to wire like $225,000. And no lie, bro. My only option was either send him that money or refund 900 grand worth of orders. And I was not finna do that. Mm. 
So, bro, I literally got it the next day. I, I learned how to send my first wire. <laughs> and I sent that money to a stranger, bro. I didn't even know his full name. <laughs> Sweating bullets. <laughs> I didn't even know his name, but, like, I kid you not, bro, he just landed at 535. Like, that's, that's like, my best friend now, two years, uh, going on two years later. Because we down here where I'm, I'm about to roll out, roll out an artificial intelligence and robotics company and a water company. So he down, he just got to Tampa literally like an hour and a half ago so we can map that out. But yeah, bro, so I shot that to him just on a hope and a prayer. And bro, he literally hit me back a couple of days later and was like, look, I'm going to have some samples to your door within two, within two weeks. Sign off on the samples and they're going to start mass producing. And from there, bro, we've been rolling ever since. Talk about trust. Just, again, just speaking on the procrastination factor that bro mentioned, I did lose around like $150,000 on that board game on that project from refunds, chargebacks, for the simple fact that I wasn't really educated on how to do business cross seas. So a lot of it was just trial and error for me. It was just shooting my shot and seeing what it fall. And eventually it fell. I figured out the formula and we kept going. But on that first 10,000 batch of board games, I definitely lost easily 150,000 with people just being pissed that it took so long. What, what was that process like? I mean, obviously, you're talking about trust. You're sending a quarter million dollars overseas. But what's that process like working with people overseas? We, we've had an experience, and it didn't go that, that well. What, what was your experience? <laughs> well, the dope thing about him, right, his parents was missionaries. So he kind of, it's like he knows somebody everywhere. So, bro, he got, he got like, healthy relationships to where, like, when he called, they'd be on go. Mm. So, bro, I ain't going to lie. Like, I've never spoken directly with China ever. I hit bro, he middleman it, and he literally come back 24 hours later with a, with a, with a result. And I just green light it. But no, nah, bro, in, in terms of everything, China has been very professional. They've executed everything on time. And I'm going to tell you one more thing, bro, in terms of the procrastination that did hurt during the process. So because I made people wait so long, I really didn't have the option to move it by ship. I did, but it would have took an extra 60 days. So, bro, we had an overnight 10,000 pounds worth of, I mean, 10, in terms of pounds, you got 10,000 board games coming on a plane. Bro, mm. I paid more for the flight than I paid for the production. And I had to do that twice because I took so long. So, granted, I made almost a million dollars off the first batch, but we lost 150,000 in refunds. And then we spent right around like 245,000 to even get it here. So, Almost like 400 grand of that was a L. Well, not really an L, because some, some of it went into production, but 400,000 of that was going out the door off top. Mm. But like overnight and that many pounds worth of, worth of board games is a serious is a serious price. So because it was delayed, you expedited it. So it's like instead of 7 to 10, now you're doing 3 to 5? Right, bro. So people already beating me over the head like, where my game? Where my game? So <laughs> I, I, I hit my bro. I'm like, man, they can't get it. How fast? He was like, all right, bro, they could do overnight. But because coming from China, it's still, they overnight is three days. And I'm like, all right, bro. And he was like, you got to send me another 90. It was like 98 grand just for the flight. And I was like, all right. I sent them the money and they got it here. And then Customs was tripping, holding it up. Ooh. Bro, we took like three U-Hauls all the way down to Miami from Tampa, packed all the board games. So many board games, we still didn't even have enough U-Hauls with three. Drove them back to Tampa, start packaging and getting it out. So so as far as the board game, like I, I get the game. What am I gonna learn? Like is it is it like a monopoly? Like what's the what's the yeah. kind of format? So bro, uh for me, in my opinion, bro, it's 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 really opposite of monopoly, right? Because the whole goal is collective economics. And, like, it'd be funny, right? People look at the board and be like, what do I get when I go past go? And I'm like, bro, this ain't Monopoly. You don't get nothing. Do, I, do, I, do our culture be getting awarded $100,000 when we graduate school? No. We, we probably have a hoop being an $8 job in fast food. $100,000 so in debt. You feel me, bro? And then, and then, too, not knocking Monopoly, bro, but I just felt like a lot of that was, like, it, 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 it just wasn't a genuine perspective for our culture. Like, how many of us get to inherit railroads? That's not our model. And then it's just like, we the last people that need to be trying to monopolize the bros and choke them out and break their neck. You feel me? So my game is really the total opposite. It's kind of showing us collectively how to come together and beat the system. Like in the game, they have these. I have these cards called system issues where you're going to roll the dice and you're going to end up in jail because you don't understand the discrepancies. The, I'm sorry, the sentencing discrepancies between powder cocaine and crack cocaine. A lot of people don't know, like, our culture was targeted through that. Or a lot of people don't know the difference between mm -hmm. traveling and driving. So, bro, 
those are some of the things that people are going to learn in the game. And the dope thing about it, which is the funny part, is before you can play the game, you have to define the intellectual property cards. So people be super excited, like, yeah, man, just got my game. I'm about to bust it open. And in my head, I'm laughing like, nah, bro, y'all finna do like a month worth of research. Then you're going to get to play the game. Nah, you know, I, it's, it's, it's interesting because I never thought about it like that. But Monopoly, I mean, it's the name is Monopoly. Mm -hmm. You're, right. The game is to monopolize it. And it's like, yeah, is that is that really what you want to do as an entrepreneur and it's like especially us in our community that's not probably something that we should aspire to it to monopolize something is exactly. hey, it's probably not going to happen let's yeah. just be honest but then b it's like we would be better if we learned group economics like yeah. so that's well, interesting like, look, I, I can't speak for all the other coaches but i, I think for ours that is the type of time we need to be on right now for yeah. Monopoly. Yeah. We need to try to figure out how to get our infrastructure together individually, then get together collectively and become a powerhouse. But we we ain't even got no legs right now to stand up and talk. Like, yeah, man, I'm finna monopolize all this. <laughs> we working for the Monopoly. And, we working for Amazon. And I saw that you said it's also it's a um it's really an educational course in game. Absolutely. It's like a game. It's like educational course in game format where right. people learn. It's like going to school and learning. Yeah. So you, hey, you, yeah, bro, that's I'm no, like, my bad, bro. Go ahead. No, nah, you go ahead. Well, no, bro. I was just saying, like, that's always my motto, bro, is just finding fun and creative ways that we could learn and we could teach. So for me, and it worked, bro. I really felt like, all right, y'all, this is how we're going to infiltrate the system. Even down to the video game with, you know, uh, this fall, we're going PS5, Xbox, and PC. But it's the same method. Um, the medicine and the candy, bro. We're we, we going to find, we're going to figure out a way to get into your crib. And once we get in there, you're going to be like, oh, okay, so bro really trying to make us a little more business savvy or, or stronger, you know, economically and financially, you know, why mixing a little ratchet in there? So, yeah. yeah. And, sure. I, and I respect too, like you said, with the with the um, pricing, because it's, it's not, you can't look at it as just a regular board game that's just here to entertain you. It's an educational course. So, of course, right. it has to be priced accordingly yeah. because Absolutely. you're, so if you look at it from that point, it's, it's a sh extreme, uh, it's extremely underpriced. Right, well, that, that'd be the question. People, people say all the time, like, why is the board game this much? And I'm like, bro, you couldn't have read a description because you would know, like, the secondary definition of this is a board game. But if you're going with the primary, bro, this is a tool. Like, I'm teaching you the different, like, small. Well, it's not small, but the difference between tri uh, driving and traveling. You don't even know what type of verbiage to use when law enforcement encounter you. Or you don't understand the importance of your Second Amendment. Like, that's not a board game. That's real game, real life information That's real application, that we yeah. definitely need right now in 2020. Because 2020 is turned up, bro. This, this <laughs> year, like, I don't know what this year smoked and snorted and drunk <laughs> December 31st, but this year is turned up. So I, I, I was going to go into the homeschool part because I know you've been doing that with your children. When you yeah. were cre creating curriculums at that time for your kids, is this how you transitioned into the curriculum for the board game in a sense? Yeah, bro. That, that's exactly what happened. So, Initially, I was just teaching my children different things in the crib. One of the videos went viral on June 8, 2016, on my daughter's birthday. And then the demand came, and people was like, man, I want, I want my babies to know this and know that. Then that's when I started saying, okay, cool, let me write these curriculums so I can start shipping them out to the streets, and people could start giving the same information to their babies. But no, nah, it, it literally is like a lot of the same information curriculum-wise on notes that I was taking for years, and then I just poured it into board game format and ran with it. And yeah, and speaking about the price, like we always try to do the little little discount for for our listeners. We you know we love you guys, the earners. That's what we call all our all our supporters, earners. So if you go to the link, if you're listening to this on YouTube, the link in our description or Apple or Spotify, we we'll also put it on our on our website under EYL Alumni tab. It, all you gotta do when you on the checkout is enter code EYL. Yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate that for sure. And um, like I said, I mean that's something that I think everybody needs to take advantage of because. We learn in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like even us, we was talking off camera, but all three of us has learned a lot from music. And you would think that, you know, music isn't necessarily schooling, but it is a lot of times for good or bad. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot <laughs> from music. And um, I think to, to actually have the, the foresight to put the education in uh, a game format is very, very brilliant. And, um, you know, I've only heard rave reviews from it. Um, I actually got to gotta invest in one yeah, myself. Yeah. 
playing with my son. I, 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 I got to hear something. I got a question for you after he's done. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I say that to say, if you guys are interested, we do have a uh, discount for you guys. Uh, EYL, like I said, you can go click the link and um, among check out, just type in EYL and then you, you're good to go. Yeah. Derek, you, you got to talk to me about couples quarantine, man. What, couples quarantine. What's, what's that about, man? Quarantine edition. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, me and my lady, uh, bro, we, we, we came up with a 10 step guide as to how we, 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 we stay young. Happy at peace. I mean, we have we have issues like everybody else do sometimes, right. bro. Like it happens, but for the most part, bro, we we in the collective, we happy, we we young at heart, we wild and we free, and not wild in a negative way, but you know, bro, just in terms of communication and and, and transparency and and just being intentional about being one another peace or being yeah. a supporter, speaking life into one another, bro. So we 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 cooked up a guide. You feel me? Giving people ten, it's like fourteen steps. On how we maintain that uh that special bond. That <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's dope, man. I, I I keep saying it, man. The 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 pet, being like quarantine, it, it, it's a good time to be married, man. Like we we spoke to somebody the other day. It was like, yo, it's my I'm going on my first date in four months. I'm like, damn, I couldn't imagine what that would feel like. It's like, a good time you, to you be buy- married if you married to the right. <laughs> that's true. Divorce, if you married to the right person, divorce rates are through the roof right that's now. That's true. So hey, bro, let's say that I remember me and her chilling. I was just like. Man, I'm so grateful for you. And she was like, why? And I was like, my last relationship, if I was quarantined with her, like, I don't know what I would do. And I, I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I really sat there and just was thankful. Like, man, I'm glad. Like, I ain't tripping on the quarantine because I'm just really surrounded by people that I genuinely love. And I love to spend time with them. It's not yeah. like a time limit or like, you know, at the four hours, I got to break away. Like, no, nah, I love being in this spot. I'm with you. I'm with you on that, man. It's, it's been, like, like you said, you get to spend time with your family. My wife cooks every day. She takes care of everything, she takes care of all the kids' needs. So it's yeah. been beautiful in that sense, man. And then we get to learn and we get to really appreciate the time that we have. Because we've been, in yeah, New York yeah. especially, man, it's hustle and bustle. You know what I'm saying? It, right. you usually, you can see them in the, right before they go to work. They come home from work. It's like, all right, time to cook dinner and go to bed. You know what I'm saying? So you miss these these, these type of moments, man. But definitely, right. I'm with you on that. Nah, man. So, yeah, that was... um. That was a very enlightful interview. Derek, you're, you're a gentleman and a scholar. And I want to I want to say that too, because I think it's important for people to, you know, not judge a book by its cover, right? It's like you see you see a guy with guns, tattoos on his face, and dreadlocks, but he's very polite. He's very he's very respectful. Um, and that just goes to show you that once again we can't judge a book by its cover, but you don't you could be whoever you want in this world. And that's the good thing with Earn Your Leisure. Like, we never tell people you have to be this way. We have people from all different walks of life, um, different backgrounds. And that's okay because it's like the world is made up of a bunch of different types mm-hmm. of people, right? So right. never never discount somebody um, because of how they look because you could potentially – be discounting yeah. somebody that could make you a lot of money or you could make a lot of money with, could be a business partner you can get married to. So yeah. I think it's important to highlight that um, because yeah, it's, it's something that, you know, a lot of, a lot of outlets probably would have shot away. Like, Oh no, this is too, what is this going on here? Yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we don't and care. Bro, it is what it is. And I'm just real quick, bro. I think that's, I think that's one of the things that make me most dangerous as well as the people I build with is that we receptive to new information, whether it be, like, I mean, bro, just speaking on my lady, bro, like, my lady is a retired dancer, and I'm a dad with five children with three mothers. You feel me? Society-wise, she's the woman that they say, like, stay away from, and I'm the daddy that they say stay away from. But those two weird entities in terms of society's definition join, and you feel me? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I feel like I'm the most dangerous I've ever been. I make more money than i ever made. I'm happier. I've been losing weight. I've been gaining weight my whole life. I've been losing weight lately. I've been riding my bicycle and eating my pineapple. <laughs> yeah, 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 I feel you. <laughs> find dangerous connections in the most oddest places. That's because we make ourselves receptive to people, and we don't just, you know, shut the door on them because society said, "Don't kick it with somebody that looked like this and that." Yeah, that's a fact. Anything you want to make the people aware of that we might not have talked about? How can the people contact you, follow you, and all of that information? 
Absolutely, bro. So just three things, bro. First and foremost, I want to shout y'all out. I'm in my save folder. Okay. Y'all got to excuse uh, the second row. Let me click on y'all picture. I got some stuff in here saved that the world needs to see. Anyway, I'm in my save folder, right? And it says that, oh, yeah. I said, there it go. Orange Leisure is the best podcast on iTunes. I, I was actually planning to repost this tonight, bro. Literally saved this seven hours ago. I appreciate, I appreciate that. So appreciate salute to y'all, bro, for killing it because y'all really do be killing it. And, uh, Outside of that, bro, I just want to tell everybody to be on the lookout for Grace Essentials. I'll be rolling out my water, my toilet tissue company, and we got self-defense weapons that's rolling out. Uh, and also, uh, my artificial intelligence and my robotics company is rolling out this summer as well. So I know a lot of people, especially the other side, they thought our culture was going to be dead last in terms of tech, artificial intelligence. But I got a plug across these, and I literally got eight robots in my living room as we speak, bro. So I'm <laughs> my absolute best. <laughs> Absolute best to get them in, to get them into the culture hands as soon as possible, so our people not dead last when it comes to these robots, and especially not our babies. Definitely, that's a fact. That's a fact. Troy, housekeeping item. Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. That is our proud to pay program. We spoke about Nip earlier. We actually got that from him. Um, and you know, if you if you join, there's five different tiers. The top two tiers get you access to EYL University. Shout out to Javaris who joined at tier five, and Sheena who joined at tier four. They are new uh, earners. Shout out to y'all. And um, like we said. It gets you access to EYL University, our online schools, the number one business school in the country right now. That's a fact. And um, also, it gets you access to our private real estate group, which has been amazing. A lot of lives going on, man. Go ahead. Hey, bro, real quick. Hi, what, where's the link? Where do you find that at? I want to join. Um, yeah, it, so it's on our website, earnyourleisure.com. I'll send it to you, but yeah, EYLUniversity.com also. Yeah, and then we got to make yeah. sure that you get a, a grand interest when you come in. Yeah, <laughs> maybe you could teach a class. So, so what, we, what we do is every week, um, we mm -hmm. have a different, we call them professors teaching a class, like a Zoom class. Yep. It's like interactive where people actually ask, get to ask questions because a lot of times they see people on a podcast, but yeah. it's like they, they have more in-depth questions. So it was like an hour class, like a real class. The teacher presents for like mm -hmm. 20 minutes and then it's like an interactive discussion. So if you're interested, we would love to yeah, have gonna be dope. class for us. That'd be dope. Yeah, once uh, this comes up... Uh, uh, once it comes out, Bro, you, beco you become alumni of Earn Your Leisure. So that's why we got Earn Your Leisure University. So your alumni come back and teach, man. Yeah. I got you. But no, bro, a, a, a thousand percent I want to be there, bro. As of late, I definitely been trying to uh, invest with all my bros. I just bought Brother Ben course. I bought, uh, I bought Runway Millionaire course. Bro, I've been buying courses all pandemic, just trying to sharpen my eye. While I'm in the crib like everybody else, bro. So for sure, I'm I'm, I'm make sure I get that link from you so I can join. Nah, I appreciate that's, that's that. Dope. I appreciate that, brother. Um, and then yeah, um, you got so we do a book tip, but you got a bunch of books. So <laughs> what? Tell tell them about the books. Tell them tell them about your books that you have. If you want to plug all of them, the, the the most recent one. But um, what books should they be reading from from you? Uh, bro, I, I would tell everybody, my, and the personal books that I've written, I would direct everybody to grab Guys and Monks Man Volume 1. That's the one that made me a number one selling author, and I feel like that's still my most powerful book. It's really a series. I got my autobiography, and I got four different volumes of Guys and Monks Man Volume 1. But to me, I mean, I, I, you know what I'm going to say this too, bro, the post-Trump pack. I feel like that body of work is the most dangerous body of work I put out, period. Uh, from, from the artificial intelligence to the co-parenting to everything in there, bro. I try to touch on as many things in my level of expertise that I could to give people some game. You feel me? That they can apply tomorrow and get it going. Is that is that still open or is it closed, the Trump pack? So, no, bro, the course is closed. Like, okay. we're still going, but we closed the admission because I, I don't want to deal with too many people. We're we already at 2,000 people. I stopped at the death. But the pack is still 100% available, and that's comprised of, like, 20, 21 different bodies of work from myself. Dope, dope, dope. All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, don't forget to get the merch, guys. Earnyleisure.com. We're going to get you some merch, too. We're going to have some merch sent to you. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.